Welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Chris Costa. And I'm Joanne Laflamme. So Joanne, last time we covered material category setup, I thought mm -hmm. tonight maybe we'd cover uh, setting up an item. That'd be you great. Know, maybe a sheet item, sheet stock. Sure, that'd okay. be great. Thank we you. We can go through that, sure. Uh, so I've got the inventory screen open. Uh, highlighted on a category that's sheet stock, I'll just add an item to it. And we'll get a, a blank form. First thing we want to do is... And I'm not going to go ahead and actually fill everything out. We'll just kind of talk through this today. Uh, the first thing we'll do is enter a material code. Description, RFQ description. Uh, you know, just setting the basics for the item. Okay. Okay. And then the next group of fields would be, you know, your color, your basis weight, M weight, uh, and stuff like that. And the, the couple of fields here, like your basis weight, your M weight, the basic area, the caliper, those are fields that your vendor should be able to provide to you. Okay. Um, and now what would be the importance of having those filled in? Uh, well, those in combination will be used for certain calculations. Okay. Okay, like boxing calculations, mm -hmm. net pounds, stuff like that. Okay. Okay, so you'd want to fill that out accurately from your vendor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the size information, width and length. Uh, supplier ID, if you want to tag this specifically to a vendor, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that uh, along with their manufacturer number. So if you want to um, assign this specifically to a vendor. And that way, if you're in purchasing and you pull in the vendor mm -hmm. and you want to see what their materials are, it'll come right in. But now if I don't want to attach it to a vendor because I buy it from multiple vendors, mm -hmm. I don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, you'd want to set your costing method. Uh, if you hit the pull down here, plenty of options, each thousand MSI square inch. So you'd uh, select the appropriate costing method. Select the appropriate valuation for inventory, standard, LIFO, FIFO. Okay. Okay, and those kind of things there. And then there's a custom unit of measure. Uh, if you, if each or thousand doesn't work and you want to write a custom, you know, conversion, you can do that. Too. Okay. Okay. GL expense code here. This would be the code that will follow through on the purchase order. So if you're not using our inventory integration, typically this would be the cost of goods. Okay. Code or the direct expense. If it was a consumable item, it would be a direct expense. Okay. Uh, if you were using our inventory integration, it would usually be the PO accrual account. Okay. Okay. And you don't have to set it here. Um, you can also set it at the, at the su um, supplier level as well. The material item will always take precedence over the vendor. So if you do know it at the, at the material level, it's best to put it here because it will, that's the most granular okay. level. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can assign a default location code. Uh, a parent material code, if, if this particular item is one that gets cut down uh, from a larger stock, mm -hmm. you can assign the ag, the parent stock. Now that would be if I cut it down and then put it back into inventory? Correct. Okay. Yeah, if you bought a, you know, a real large sheet mm -hmm. of paper and you were going to cut it down in fours, and this item here was you know, one of the fours and you were going to put it into inventory, but you want to tie back to the parent item, you okay. can do that. Okay. Uh, you can track the customer account if it's customer owned. You can there's a checkbox for customer owned as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then a series of options starting at the top. You can mark the item as inactive. Okay, that allows you to keep the material in the database, mm -hmm. not to delete it um, and orphan historical records, but right. you know keep the records in the database but mark it inactive so it, they won't be able to be used. Okay, makes sense. Okay. Uh, don't auto deduct when the job is completed. Don't auto update when job recalculates. So these are just a couple of options. Uh, there's an auto deduct function uh, in job costing. If you have that turned on, uh, this will ignore this material from that function. Okay. Okay. Same thing with the auto update. Okay. okay. It will ignore this item as part of that routine. Uh, do not inventory, do not requisition. Um, if you want to put the item in the database, but you don't want the inventory module to be managed with this item, you know, okay. counts going up and down. Right. Um, so you, in other words, if I want to have it there, so the specs are entered, mm -hmm. but I don't inventory it. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And the same thing with do not requisition. You may have an auto requisition function on, but you want this item to be ignored from it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can mark whether the item is pre-collated or coded on one side. Uh, basically just flags uh, to let you know if, you know, if that stock is one of those. Okay. particular items. Uh, coded one side is nice because um, if you use one of the methods, imposition and, and estimating whether it's going to work in turn, uh, the system will warn you. 
Okay. And it's covered mm -hmm. on one side. Okay. Uh, you can mark whether the material is going to need an inspection, uh, whether it's going to require, you know, to use a separate markup. Uh, you can assign a markup table. Okay, so I can select from one of my markup tables. Uh, you can put a minimum cost. You can set up a carton quantity. Uh, and the thing with a carton quantity, you know, let's say you want to have it bought in cartons of 500. Mm -hmm. um, if the job only costs for 480, it will still use 500 and that cost will go to the customer as 500. Okay, so if I buy it in cartons of 500, but I don't want to pass that cost, cost off to the customer, I shouldn't put it in there. Correct. Okay. You should leave that alone, yep. Okay. Uh, you can enter the cubic weight if necessary. Uh, reorder level, desired level. Uh, if you want to utilize a reorder report, you can put in a reorder quantity and a desired quantity. Uh, so let's say if my stock gets down to a thousand, I want to buy uh, an additional ten thousand. You know, I can set up my desired quantity at at a certain number, say fifteen thousand, and my reorder level at say two thousand. So every time I drop down to two thousand, it's going to want to buy another thirteen thousand. Okay. Okay, to bring me back up to my desired level. I see. Okay. Uh, you can enter a lead time, just reference only how long is it going to take to get this stock from your vendor. Uh, the last time it was updated. Quantity per PO unit. We actually don't necessarily recommend you utilize this field, but rather the PO info button, which we'll talk about at another time. That's okay. where you can set up a factor. If you buy it one method, but want to receive it into inventory in a separate method, mm -hmm. uh, you can go into the PO info button and, and configure that. Okay. Okay, so we'll talk about that at another, another time. Uh, if you are set up as multi-plant, you can indicate which plant this material would get assigned to. Um, inventory up, number of shelves. Uh, if this item is a business card, uh, or actually if this, I'm sorry, if this item is a shell printing business mm -hmm. cards, you can indicate how many shells you can get. Okay. On the, okay. And then the number out of the parent actually ties back to this parent material code. So if this item is one that you're cutting down, if you buy a larger sheet and you're going to mm -hmm. cut down in fours, um, you can indicate how many out of the parent you're going to get. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Okay. Um, you've got five user-definable fields here. And then you've got down at the bottom, you'd enter your estimating unit cost, which we can get into a little more specifically later. But that's where you would enter your estimating cost, your PO unit cost, and so forth. But, okay. Okay. Great. Any other questions? No, I think you've answered everything. Thank that's you good. very much. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm Chris Costa. This was another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. And I'm Joanne LaFlamme. Thank you. Please look forward to more to come.